Hi, let's discuss LR parsing. Bottom parsing is of two type. One is operator precedence parsing, another is LR parsing. I already discussed operator parsing, just go through the previous video. Now we'll discuss LR parsing. You can say an efficient bottom of parsing that can be used to parse large class of context free grammar is called LRK parsing. So, what is that LR parsing? First L stands for left to right scan, then R stands for rightmost derivation in reverse, and K is the number of input symbol or you can say look ahead symbol. I already discussed a rightmost derivation in reverse. If you are doing a rightmost derivation in case of top down parsing and you will reverse that, then that will be a bottom up parsing. In case of LL1 parsing, first L was left to right scan, second L was leftmost derivation, then one was the look ahead symbol. In case of LR, first L is for left to right scan, then this R is for rightmost derivation in reverse. Next, what are the advantage of LR parsing? First advantage, it recognizes all programming language for which context free grammar can be written. So, LR parsing can recognize all the programming language for which you can write a context free grammar. Second advantage, it is a efficient non backtracking shift reduce parsing. Shift reduce parsing is a general type of bottom parser. Then, it detects syntax error as soon as possible. It detects error faster than top down parsing. Next advantage, a grammar that can be parsed using LR method is a proper superset of grammar that can be parsed with predictive or you can say LL1 parser. So in LR parsing, we can parse more language than LL1 parsing. You can say LL1 is a subset of LR. The grammar which are LL1 grammar can also be a LR grammar. The grammar which are LR grammar is not necessarily a LL1 grammar. LR is a superset of LL1. This is important. You will get question on this that LR grammar is superset of LL1 grammar. Next drawback of LR method. What is drawback? You have to do lots of work for doing the LR parsing. You have to design the augmented grammar, then design the DFA, then table. There are lots of work that is a disadvantage. There are some specialized tool called as LR parser generator. One example is YAC, Y A C C. This is a LR parser generator. Types of LR parsing method one is SLR or you can say simple LR, it is the easiest and least powerful. Then is CLR, CLR is canonical LR, it is most powerful and most expensive. Next, LALR that is look ahead LR. It is intermediate in size and cost. So, it have less power than CLR. It have more power than SLR. It is the intermediate between SLR and CLR. So, CLR is most powerful and SLR is least powerful. Next, construction of LR parse table. First step, obtain the augmented grammar. Second step, construct the canonical collection of LR item. Third step, draw the DFA. Fourth step, construct the parse table from the DFA. So, for doing LR parsing, we need to do this four step. First, we need to write augmented grammar. Then, you need to find LR item. Then, draw the DFA. Then, construct the parse table. So, let's discuss what is augmented grammar. If you are adding an extra production before the first production, then that is a augmented grammar. Like suppose a grammar is G and G dash will be augmented grammar if you are adding a production S dash derive S and S is the start symbol. In simple way you can say if you are adding one more production before the start symbol then this is a augmented grammar. Next we will see what is LR0 item. An LR parser make a shift reduce decision by maintaining a state to keep track of where we are in the place. Means how much we have done, how much is left it track. That tracking it will do by giving a dot in between the production of RHS that is a LR item. 
if you are adding a dot in RHS of production that is a LR item just for example suppose a derive x y z then LR item will be a derive dot x y z this dot before x y z means we have not seen x y z x dot y z means we have already visited x then next we will visit y and z x y dot z means we have visited x y next we will visit z then x y z dot means we have visited all x y z now it's time to reduce x dot y z means we have just seen the string derivable from x and next to see the string that will be derivable from y z and x y z dot means we have seen the body of x y z and now it's time to reduce so this dot is a marker that which variable or terminal we already visited and which next to visit suppose there is a epsilon transition then you will simply write a derive dot next function is to generate lr0 item there are two function one is closure another is go to closure i i is the set of item go to i x x is the grammar symbol let's first discuss closure of i if i is the set of item for grammar g then closure of i will be set of item according to following two rules First step, we will write that augmented grammar, that extra production we have added. Then we need to write all the production of S. Then second step, if there is a production A derive alpha dot B beta, means alpha we already visited, next to visit B. Then B have a production B derive gamma, then you need to add this B derive gamma in closure of this production. Suppose a grammar is given S derive A B, then A derives some A A, then there is a augmented grammar S dash A. So first step will write S dash derive dot S. When there is a dot symbol before S, you need to write S production. So S production will be S derive dot A B. Then when there is a dot before A, you need to add A production. There is a, a production, then you need to add A derive dot a a so whenever there is a dot symbol before a non-terminal you need to write production of that non-terminal so that is a closure of i next what is go to suppose one state contain a derive alpha x beta then by x you can go to another state there the production will be a derive alpha x dot beta so this dot was before x by x transition will go to another state where dot will be after x that is a go to from state i by x we are going to another state suppose a grammar is s derive a b and there is a dot symbol then from this state by a you will reach to another state s derive a dot b from this state by a we go to this state these are all about the LR item or you can say construction of DFA. Let's discuss how we we'll construct the parsing table. There will be two part. One will be action and another will be go to. Like suppose this is action and another is go to. And action will contain all the terminal. Whatever the terminal you will write here with the dollar symbol. And in go to you will write all the variable and that left side will write all the state name action function take as argument a state i and a terminal or dollar in action part there will be terminal or dollar then action part contains shift or reduce of terminal in action part either it will be shift or it will be reduce in go to part there will be only shift if x is a terminal and go to i x equal to i j then we need to place sj in action. If from state i1 by x you are going to state i2, then here you will write s2. Next, if the parser accept the input and finish the parsing, then you have to place acc. acc is for accept in dollar column of action part. Generally, we will do this for the augmented grammar like a dash derived dot s. In this state, where it contains s derive s dot, there you will write accept. 
in dollar column. If the set i contain final item, then place r i under all terminal in action part. What is r i? r stands for reduction and i is a number that we are assigning for every production. If this is a final item, then you have to write that r i in every column of action part. Go to function will take argument as a state i and a non-terminal. And there will be only shift operation of non-terminal. In action part, there will be shift plus reduce plus accept also. In go to, there will be only shift operation of non-terminal. If x is a non-terminal and go to i x equal to i j, then place j in go to. In place of action, you will place s j. But in place of go to, you will simply place j. Means you need to place the number like 4 or 5. You need to place the state number. Next, LR grammar in LR parsing table. The grammar which is free from multiple entry is called as LR grammar. In next lecture, I will discuss example of LR parsing. If this video is helpful for you, please like and subscribe. Thank you.